Hello to everybody out there in Periscope land. This is Brother Ed. and Welcome to KJV Bible Scope. And we are in the middle of our series, The Doctrine of the Deity of Christ, Part 5. Oh, guys, we're laboring through this because there should be no doubt in your mind that Jesus Christ is God. He's, people say, no, he's the son of God. I agree with you. He is the son of God. But being the son of God makes him God. Okay? See, people think that Jesus being the son of God makes him not God, but being the son of God makes him God. Not that he was born of the father, not that he was some child that was created, uh, some created being as Jehovah Witnesses would believe, but that Jesus Christ is co-eternal with the father. Jesus Christ is co-eternal with the Holy Ghost. So what you have is in eternity, you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost living and abiding co-eternally together as one God. Okay, guys? Now, now, now this is what we believe as Bible-believing Christians. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, you're not going to believe what I'm saying. Because uh, all throughout the Bible, the teaching and doctrine of the Holy Spirit being God, as Jesus Christ being God, and God the Father being God, are predominantly taught throughout the scriptures unquestionably. All right, guys, so with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on on our comparison chart. So here we go. The, where we left off was the Almighty God. We proved that Jehovah is the Almighty God. We proved that Jesus was the Almighty God. And now we're going to go to the first and the last. So Jehovah is the first and the last, right? Isn't Jehovah the first and the last? Let's look. Thus saith the Lord, that's Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. So, this Lord, right? This Lord, this King of Israel, and people always miss this, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. How can you have the Lord, the King of Israel, and then it says, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. You got a problem there. You got two people mentioned in this passage. How's it going, Des? You got two people mentioned in this passage. You got the Lord, the King of Israel, and you have his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Who's this Lord of hosts? Who's this Lord, the King of Israel? You got two people. Why did it say, guys, why did it not say the, the Lord, the King of Israel, who is the Lord of hosts? I am the first. I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. No. Why do you have an and his? If you say and his, then you're definitely not talking about the Lord, the King of Israel. You're talking about somebody else. So you got the Lord, the King of Israel and somebody else, the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So you got two people in here that are Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now, who is this Lord? I am the first and I'm the last. And beside me, there is no God. But so how do you got two Jehovah's? Well, not unless one of them is God the Father and one of them is Jesus Christ that is living co-eternally as the word in the Old Testament. And they are one, John 10, 30, I and my father are one, in which you could say beside me there is no God, because there is no God but one God, the Lord God the Father and the Lord the eternal word of God. How about that? Now, he's the first and the last. That's what we're focusing on right now. If God's the first, if God Jehovah's the first and the last, you got a problem. Let's do it. Revelation twenty two thirteen. <sighs> Who's talking here, guys? We we actually read this a little bit of this, and um, let's go back. Okay, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him, and they shall see His face, and the name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, nor, nor the Lord God giveth them light. 
For the Lord thy God, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now look, and he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Who's talking there? It's the Lord Jesus. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when he had, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, seal not the book, the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and, and the end, the first and the last. Who's talking? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Alpha and Omega. Now, what is he? The beginning and the end, the first and the last. He can't be. Why? He can't be. Why? We just said it. We just said it, guys. Because Isaiah 44, 6 says, according to Jehovah God, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. No, you got a problem there. Because Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So I wonder, I wonder who it is. It's both. God the Father and God the Son are the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You see that? Guys, you can't get out of it. Whatever the Father has, the Son has. Let's do it again. Savior, Isaiah 43, 11. I, even I, am the Lord. That's Jehovah, Jehovah God. And beside me, there is no Savior. So wait a minute. There is no Savior beside the Lord Jehovah. Only the Lord God is the Savior. Okay, let me say that one more time. Only the Lord God, the Father, is the Savior. One more time. One more time. Only the Lord God, the Father, is the Savior. We read it. I'll read it again. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Only the Lord God, the Father, is the Savior. Okay, just, for, just so you soak it in like a sponge. Only the Lord God, the Father, is the Savior. Okay, let's do it. Titus 1.3 but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. So who's the Savior? The Lord God is our Savior. Let's keep reading. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and the what? The Lord Jesus Christ, our what? See the capital S there? Savior. So God is our Savior, but wait a minute. How can the Lord Jesus Christ be the Savior when God is our Savior? Oh, we just realized that the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, is God. All right, guys. You also got another problem, Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the what? the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So wait, who's the Savior, guys? Jesus Christ. That can't be. That can't be. Because Isaiah 43, 11 says, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Ed, you're saying Jesus is the Savior and God the Father is the Savior. But, but that's contradiction because God the Father said there is no Savior beside me. Yeah, but first John first John five uh what thirteen? Titus two yeah. thirteen. Titus two thirteen. Jesus Christ is the Savior. So Titus one three, Titus one four proves Jesus is the Savior, and Isaiah forty three eleven proves that God the Father's the Savior. So who's the Savior? I and my, my Father, Father are one. one. John ten thirty. 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Get this in your head. John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. 
John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. I want you guys to memorize that, okay? John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. Whenever you have a questionable doubt about uh, attributes of the Father, attributes of the Son, right away, go to John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. All right, let's do it. Let's keep going. Let's do, I'm going to skip this one. Let's do who made man. Who made man? God. G Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now, look at this. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let what? Us. Make man in our image, after our likeness. So wait a minute, who, who, who made man? Was it just Jehovah God? Or was it God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost? Yes. Yes. And yes, I said it three times so you'd know. I said yes to all three. Okay, guys, who is the I am? Exodus 3, 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Now, we're looking who's talking right here in, in Exodus 3, 7. I'm showing you context. Who's talking? The Lord said. That's who's talking right there. Now, let us go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And you know, the, the question is asked right here. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they say, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And see, and that's how, that's why God's answering that. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So who am I supposed to tell the children of Israel who sent me? I am. I am that I am has sent me unto you. That's a name of God. The I am. See how it's all capitalized right there? That's the name of God. God the Father. I am. That's proving that he is God. Okay, guys, you got to know that. That's that's God's name. I am that I am. That is his name. That's not a title. That's his name. I am is his name. Now, watch this. John 8, 58. Now, let's go back. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I, and if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, did he just say that? And look what the Jews say. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, you know, verily, verily just means truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, uh oh, uh oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Uh, snap those fingers, roll that neck. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> Jesus said, I am. Now, what, now, now, guys, look at the next verse here. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. What's going on here, guys? Why did they take up stones to cast at him? If I am does not mean he is God. Because even the Jews understood Exodus 3.14. They know that I am is only applied to God himself. And Jesus right there in John 8.58 called himself God. 
Where in the Bible does Jesus call himself God? Here is yet another place where Jesus calls himself God. John 8, 58. Otherwise, the Jews would have no reason to take up stones to cast at him. No reason at all. The only reason why they're taking up stones is because they don't believe Jesus is God. All right, guys. There, that's your next comparison. Jehovah is the I am and Jesus is the I am. That means John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. John 10, 30, 1 John 5. Well, why do you keep saying that? Because those are the verses you cross-reference. I and my Father are one. And 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let's do it again. Who's the Redeemer? Who's the Redeemer? I think Jesus is the Redeemer. Well, Isaiah 49, 26 says that Jehovah's the Redeemer. Oh. And I will feed them that op oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Guess I was wrong. The Lord is. Uh, so who's the Redeemer? Uh, I guess it's the Lord only is. the Lord. Oh. He's the only Redeemer. That's it. You guys ready? That's it. You guys ready for this? I'm ready. Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us oh, wait. Whoa. from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Oh, whoa, whoa. So you're saying Christ has redeemed people? It's it, He couldn't redeem people if only God is the Redeemer. You just said the Lord's the Redeemer. But Christ said he's the Redeemer. I guess they are one. You know what? That almost, I, I would think that it cross-references John 10, 30 and 1 John 5, 7. I and my Father are one, John 10, 30 and 1 John 5, 7. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay, guys, let's, we're going to keep traveling. So, who doesn't change? God. Jehovah says he doesn't change. So, only Jehovah doesn't change. All right. He's the only one that has that attribute. Right. Malachi 3.6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's the Lord God Jehovah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't change. See, only the Lord doesn't change. All right, guys, you ready? I wonder if Jesus changes. Hmm. Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hmm. Seems like they're one. No, they couldn't be. Because Jesus Christ, you know, he's Jesus Christ and Jehovah is Jehovah. They can't. No, just by saying that sentence, it proves there's two there. No, 1 John 5, 7. Oh, you, no, 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 you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't give 1 John 5, 7. We don't go to those passages. You know why? Because they don't support our false doctrine of Jesus not being God. But Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Oh, there you go again. You, you're wrongly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> no, guys. John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. John 10, 30, 1 John 5, 7. I and my Father are one. And there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. <laughs> yeah, right. They're one in will. They're one in purpose. But then how do you explain one in will when, when we're dealing with the attributes of who God is? I mean, he would have to be eternal. He would have to be invisible. He would have to be absolutely righteous. And yet Jesus Christ has those attributes. It's, it's, it's almost like they're one, not in purpose, but one in person. Right. You have to go to the Greek. Oh, yeah. And you know what the Greek says about, about Jesus being God? It says in the Greek that... It says, I am... No, no, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let me do it. I, I think I, I, I've learned this a long time ago. I think in the Greek, I think I learned it. G Jesus is God. <laughs> okay, there you go. Amen. We did it in the Greek. Amen. How and about I, that? And I think the Greek says, I and my father are one. 
Amen. It does say that. Or does it? Well, I know the I know where the Holy Bible that I trust over any other document how, says that Jesus is God. How about the earlier manuscripts? The earlier manuscripts? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it says it in the in a little marginal note. Yeah, I don't speak Greek either. But I know that the that that if you were talking about the originals that don't exist anymore, do you know what they would say? Jesus is God. <laughs> hey Amen, Kyle. Okay, guys. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, so we did Savior. We did. What did we do already? We did Savior. We did God. Brother, you went all past that. Did I? Oh yeah, we're way down here. Redeemer. We did Redeemer. Oh, and change. We're almost done. Yeah. Okay, guys. Only God can forgive sins, but Jesus forgave sins. No, no, no. Well, Jesus forgave our sins. Mark two seven. Mm. Why doth this man? Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Mm. So only God can forgive sins, right? Right. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to what? <gasps> Forgive sins. That's a jaw dropper. No way. Wait. Are you telling me that Jesus can forgive sins? I thought God could only forgive sins. But Jesus says he can forgive sins. He has power to forgive sins. One plus one equals one. Guess what, guys? Matthew 9, 2. And behold, they brought him to the man, brought him the man, that's Jesus, the sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Jesus said, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Uh-oh. He not only said he can forgive sins, but he's actually forgiving people's sins. <laughs> Mark 2, 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Only God can forgive sins. Well, let's do another one. Luke 5.20. And when they saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, <laughs> come on, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Wait a minute. Only, only God can forgive sins. Let's do it again. John 8.11. She said, No man, Lord. And let's go back. We want to know what happened here. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman... He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Wait a minute. Did he just, did he just, do you say I don't condemn you? He forgave her. That's what happened right there, guys. But God could only forgive sins. Yeah, but. I got another verse that says, Luke 7, 48 says, and he said unto her, here, here we got this woman up here. Okay, guys, here's what it says. And he turned unto the woman. What are we dealing, which woman are we dealing with here? Look, a certain credit, no, no, we're going back. The woman that's washing his feet, remember? She's weeping and washing his feet, Right? Now, 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 if we go down here, she she's washing his feet, right? And look, thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in had not ceased to kiss my feet. Uh. My head, look, look, my head with oil thou didst not anoint. So she anointed Jesus, Jesus with oil and his feet. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. How is Jesus forgiving sins right there? For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Amen. All right, guys. That, I know, I that, know, that's pretty much it. Um, I know how to solve that problem. If God could forgive sins and Jesus could forgive sins. It's not on behalf. Jesus, and Jesus said, I and my father are one. So I guess Jesus is God. 
it's it's not on behalf of the father their legends um i'll show you but ye may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins so he has power to forgive sins and the only way jesus could have power to forgive sins is if he's god Amen, legends. Amen. Good question, though. That question needs to be asked because people, there may be other people that don't know. Yeah, amen, legends. Yeah, yeah, you, you really can't. Amen. No, we have uh, Brother Chris here. So, um, so amen. Amen, legends. No, no, legends. Even if you don't know, it's good to ask those questions because they need to be answered. Because we are dealing with this topic, and you're you're very good in asking those questions because that may answer somebody's question. And just like Des the other night asked asked a question on there, and I went back and looked on the scope and and found the question that Des asked according to one of the topics that I done. It really helped me to understand what people are asking, so I could do a more thorough study and and actually cover you know oppositions to what I'm what I'm teaching. And so I want to cover that. I want to cover it at every angle. So that way there's no doubt in your mind that that's what it actually says. Right. Amen. Legends. It's good, but you got to do that because it's going to help you be able to not only learn the truth and remember it and also clarify what you believe, which is really good. So yeah, don't, don't think anything bad about asking questions like that. I, I, I love questions that pertain to the topic and they're honest and sincere and, and we, can, we can pretty much handle those, you know, and, and just give an answer so we can find the verses because that's the problem with a lot of people. They, they, they know the answers, but they don't know where to find them in the Bible. And that's what I want to equip people with. I want to equip people with the answers that are actually in the Bible, in their context. And so when you're giving an answer to somebody, you've got the authority of the Bible to back you up and that's 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 why i do these scopes because i want people to have have biblical answers for carnal questions and we, that's what we need to do we need to we need to be ready we need to we need to uh know the scriptures and know where we stand in the scriptures and rightly divide them and if we don't know an answer we need to be hum we need to be humble in our in our in our you know, our knowledge and say, hey, I, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. And, and I'm, I'm quick to say, I don't know the answer because I'll tell you, look, I don't know the answer. I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll have to study that one out, but I'll tell you what I think it means, but uh, I'll try to. All right, Howie, if you hold on for one second, okay, hold on for one second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end this scope right here and I'm going to start a new scope. And this scope that I'm going to do is going to be a Q and A. So, Howie, you'll be able to ask all your questions, okay? So, um, catch me on the next scope. I'm doing a scope right away. Once we end this scope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new scope. It's going to be called Bible Q&A. And just get on that scope, and then you can ask your question, okay? So, sorry for that, guys. I just wanted to end this on the note of, you know, the doctrine of the divinity of Christ. And just end it here, and then we'll start that scope. And then, Howie, you can ask your question. Sorry, sorry that you'd have to wait for that, but we'll just go ahead and do that, okay? All right, guys. Thanks for joining me on this. And then, um, guys, I hope to catch you on the next scope that I'm about to do. And may the Lord richly bless you guys.